Hey everybody! So I've done a previous video with some of the most common game functions that you uh, always ask for, whether it's on Reddit, the auto hotkey forms. So I thought I would do uh, an expansion on that with some of the most common questions, usually relating to games and the commands that you can use. So we're going to go over some of those. So let's take a look at the code. I'm actually going to go ahead and run this. All right. So the first thing I'm starting out with up here is a F12 to suspend. Obviously, this hotkey can be whatever you guys want it to be. This is just what I'm using. I usually use the function keys just because I, in a normal day, don't have any other use for them. Uh, suspend, the reason I have that there is in case I need to stop any of the code in here, in case I want to go back to playing normal, or I just need to jump over to Chrome and still have all my functionality that I normally would have over there. So this is a good idea to put it in there so you're not having to constantly, every time you exit a game, close your script or reopen it or manually suspend or pause it. So the first one we got is basically just a rapid fire button here, just using the left mouse uh, button. So when I do that, it's going to check if the key is still being pressed, left button there, it's getting the key, uh, get key state. So while that's still pressed, just keep pushing click and sleep for 100 milliseconds. So the sleep is where you're going to want to adjust how fast you want this going. You know, if you want it to go a little slower, just increase that time up to like 500 milliseconds. If you want it to go crazy fast, if your game can handle it, go down, you know, 50 milliseconds or just remove the sleep completely. But for the most part, you're probably going to want to have that sleep there because most games, you might kind of get a little too crazy there and it wouldn't be able to kite, uh, really keep up with it. And at the end, I just want to make sure the click goes up. That way it's not getting locked down, which sometimes can happen in auto hotkeys. So I'm going to go ahead and activate this script. And when I push the left bat mouse button down, I'm just going to hold it. And as you see, it's just going crazy there. Just every 100 milliseconds it's sending. Let go of the mouse button. It stops. Hold it back down. We're good to go. All right. So that one's pretty easy on that one. Let's take a look at another one. I am going to comment this out since I'm using the same hotkey multiple times, and I'm just going one by one. So now I'm going to activate this one. Reload the script. Just because we made some changes there. All right. So this is pretty much the same thing you saw up there. You got the click with the sleep 100. The get key state is the left mouse button being pressed, which is what that P is. But this we can use a toggle with. So I'm going to toggle it on and off with F1. Once again, change it to whatever you want. And basically it's like an on and off switch uh, is what toggle is. So if it's on and I'm pressing the left mouse, mouse button, go ahead and click. If I push F1 again to turn it off, even though I'm holding that mouse button down, it's not going to do anything. This is really good. Uh, way to do this versus the suspend up there. They both pretty much function the same. It just depends on what you want. Suspend will stop all your uh, script code where this toggle would only uh, really function on this section here. So if you have a lot of functions and you only kind of want to turn one or two pieces of that code off, go with the toggle. But if you just want to turn the whole thing off, go with the suspend. So pretty simple with this one. Um, so I'm holding the mouse button down. As you see, it moves, but it's not doing any clicking. I'm going to push F1. Now I'm going to hold the mouse button. And just like up above, you got that spam clicking going on there for some rapid fire or whatever you're going to be using it for. All right. I'm going to go ahead and comment that one out. Move on to the next one. So I'm going to go ahead and uncomment these so they're ready. There we go. Reload the script. If you guys are new to this channel, definitely hit that subscribe button. I'm doing about two to three videos every week. I do lots of gaming stuff, how to automate your job, how to pretty much automate anything. So if that's something that interests you, definitely uh, check out my other videos. All right. Another common question we get asked a lot, I see, is I want a way to press a button, hold it down, have it perform an action, 
but then when I release the button, perform another action. So this is how you're going to do that. So we're using that left there again, but we're down here, we're adding the same thing, but we're putting up. So it's watching for when we actually release that key. Uh, message box, hi, that's all we're going to put in here, but you would obviously put whatever code here you want. Uh, and I'm just using send w down, once again, whatever code you want. So I'm going to go ahead and press the mouse, mouse button down here. As you see, it sent w, still holding that key down. But as soon as I release, we're going to get that message box. At least we were supposed to. Why is that not going? Let's check that out real quick. All right, I paused there for a little second and I made literally no changes to the code, but I just re-ran the script and started working. So I'm not sure what happened there. It might've crashed on me or something, but here we go. Press the button down and release. And there's our message box. So yeah, just go doing that. All right. I'm going to go ahead and suspend that and close that because I want to go ahead and uncomment those out. Save that. So this next section right here, once again, basically just kind of um, holding click down or click up. So I'm going to uncomment that. Reload the script. Hopefully it loaded this time. So here we're using a toggle again, but we're not using a second key. We're just using our mouse. This is really good for if you want to hold the mouse button down without having to actually hold it down. Uh, it's basically just it's activated through clicking once and then deactivates by clicking again. So basically L button is going to toggle. If uh, the toggle's on, which equals one, hold the click down. But the next time I click it, it's going to click up. So to show you that, I'm just going to click somewhere. And as you see, I'm not actually holding the mouse button down, but I can still move my mouse almost like it highlighting because it's holding down, but I'm going to press again. And there, it released it. So those are a few different ways to do that. The next one here we got. is a loop here. So as you see right here, I wrote, do not do this. This is something that people do a lot where they just want to add a loop so it continuously keeps clicking uh, and then have some sort of toggle where you click it again and then it'll do like a reload or a break. This is definitely not the way you want to go because if you have such a small sleep and you don't have any way of breaking it besides you know, you manually toggling it, it's not going to exit. You're going to be stuck in a loop forever. And the reload's just, it's never going to hit. So I definitely don't recommend doing this. Even if you put this reload outside as, you know, its own individual hotkey and do like, you know, a reload, it's, it's pretty much not going to work. So I do not recommend trying to use a loop for something where you're trying to spam a lot. Uh, just, Stay away from that. It's not going to end well because, you know, if your sleep is really small and you just can't find a way to break this, you're going to have to restart your computer and you won't even be able to go to like the start menu and shut down. You're going to have to hold that power button down and basically just be like, go to sleep computer, suffocate it to death. So stay away from loops in rapid fire kind of stuff. It's not a great idea. So the next one we got is a lot of people like to control their menus, uh, maybe fast item swapping, fast selling to a vendor, um, stuff like that. Uh, I can't really show you this one, but it's pretty easy to explain. So I'm going to trigger it by pushing F4. It's going to send F6. So say you're playing a video game where F6 will open a menu. Uh, you know, more likely it's actually probably like tab. 
I'm going to go ahead and change that. Because I know in a lot of games, pushing tab will open up your inventory or some sort of menu. Mouse move, that is just going to move my mouse to these coordinates. Uh, I've done some videos on how to get coordinates, so check those out. I'll try to link that in the description below. It's going to click in that area. Send control V. Maybe I want to paste some information in there or something. Uh, click, that's just a basic left mouse button click. Move to these coordinates elsewhere and click again. So this you would just really play around with, uh, you know, what what do you want to send to open the menu? Where do you want it to move? Do you want it to click somewhere? Double click, paste information. There's so much stuff you could do here. But I just want to throw this out there as a very basic kind of demo to let you know what to do. And there should also be a return here. All right. On to the next one. So this one is check if another key is being pressed. So here I'm just going to use 1 as my hotkey. Uh, it's going to get the variable. It's going to store that information of the get key state caps lock. You know, is it on? If it is, give me a message box saying it's pressed. If it is not, go ahead and give me the message box not pressed. I use caps lock as an example because... Pretty much everybody considers the caps lock to be completely useless, so it's a great hotkey to use as an on and off switch, especially because you got that little light on your keyboard that will tell you if it's on and on. So I think it's a really cool thing to use in video games as um, a toggle. Um, so yeah, let's try that one out. All right. So I'm going to press 1. It is not pressed. That is correct. I'm now going to push caps lock and press one again and it is pressed and just for the heck of it I'm going to push caps lock again one not pressed caps locks makes just it really makes an awesome toggle key because you have that light on your keyboard you don't have to remember did I toggle it or not the last time I was playing around with this script you can literally look at your keyboard and see it's really cool to do that I it's probably one of my favorite hotkeys to use inside video games because you get so distracted with other stuff uh, another common question we get a lot that we see is how to have a function happen every so often this is very popular when you're playing a video game where you're trying to like buff your character so a lot of buffs in games they'll have like a cooldown so it'd be like uh here i'm using 20 seconds so you use your buff, it lasts, it cools down for 20 seconds, you want to use it again. This is what you would do timers with, that would be the best. So I'm going to press F5, that's going to set timer, do a click, that's the handler basically saying every 20 seconds, go to this line of code and start doing stuff. And 20 seconds, um, just in case you don't know, 1000 milliseconds for a second, so 20,000. 20 seconds. Pretty easy to get a hold of that one. <laughs> uh, if I want to turn the timer off, maybe I'm no longer in battle or something, I'm just going to push F2. Same thing you saw up here, the only difference is off. That's just going to turn it off. So every 20 seconds, we're jumping down here, and we're just clicking. Uh, here, you could replace it with, you know, if your buff is assigned to your keyboard as number 4, you can just put send 4 here. And that's all that's going to do for you. Alrighty. Alright. So another uh, very common question that gets asked is for like game controllers. Or maybe you just don't know what a key is called. Uh, so if you press A, it's just A. But sometimes you might not know. Like if I want to use the scroll lock as a hotkey, is it just called scroll lock or does it have something different? I mean, this is more for like a game controller. You can plug an Xbox controller in, press some buttons, and you want to know how do I turn that into a hotkey. So that's what this is right here, but I went ahead and copied it over here. So just a few lines of code here that you just want to throw in, the uh, key hook and mouse hooks. Um, so just save that. And I'm going to bring that down and launch that. So to access this, you're actually on your 
bar at the bottom of your screen where the little carrot arrow is pointing up. Uh, I don't have that because it's actually behind me. Sorry about that. But you're going to press uh, right click on your scripts icon, which is that green H. You're going to click open and you're going to get this window here. Let's see if I can zoom in the text here. I cannot. So I'll try to read it to you. This part doesn't matter. You're going to go to view and select key history and script info or control K. And it already got a pretty big list here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start typing something. So I'm going to type in uh, T-H-O-M space tab. I'm then going to push F5. Uh, if you can't see that, it says right here, press F5 to refresh. So it refreshed. And right here, you can see the letters that I was typing. Um, some of them, uh, it looks like it's doubling. But that's just also catching the up of it. So the down press and the up release. So yeah, T H O M space tab. And then I obviously press F5, which it still catches. So if you have a controller, throw that in. You might get some key press that doesn't look like a normal button name. It could be like a string in numbers. That's fine. Just throw that into your code like this. Uh, like this. VK41. And that will turn that into a hotkey. Alrighty. So that's pretty much the most common questions I have. If there's one I missed or a few, definitely let me know in the comments below. Uh, I might make a part two of this if I can gather enough information and you guys like it. A few things I do want to throw out there to help you with scripts and gaming. Uh, please try to run it in admin mode. Uh, compile it into an extension. Uh, these will help it. Uh, window mode, that's probably by far the most problems that people run into. They'll be like, my script is perfect, the code's all correct, and I'll just be like, try running it in window mode, and suddenly it just works. The reason behind this is kind of a way to prevent uh, keylogger viruses from capturing you entering any sort of password or username into the game you're playing. So it's like a safety feature. So going into window mode should allow this. Also, depending on what you're playing and how you're using your script, you can get banned. Uh, World of Warcraft is very big on banding people when they see... Uh, they actually can track what kind of keys you're pressing in the game. And if they notice... I think it's actually an AI they have that does it. If they notice that you're doing the exact same key presses at the exact same intervals for like five hours straight, they're going to say, that's really weird. No human can do that. They're probably using a bot. Ban them. And they're pretty much no tolerance with unbanding your account. They pretty much ban you and like they won't even hear you out. So use these at your discretion. If you're playing single player, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, definitely check out my other game command uh, video that I did with a bunch of other more common functionality there. And always check out the Reddit page if you have any questions. People are always there to pretty much help you out and really good. Just be nice. Give it the old college try. Show them your code and it's going to go a long way. All right, guys. Thanks and see you later.